3D decoding works really well in practice, but there is a formalism where we don't need to make just one local optimal choice and we can do a bit better job in the decoding. And it is called RNNT beam search decoding. Let's look at again what are all possible hypotheses at a given time frame. We have looked at this slide before, but we are just revising the same concept again. So as we have seen that any time frame, I can generate infinitely many hypotheses. So let's say you are at a time frame one, your text history is beginning of sentence. You extended the hypothesis beginning of sentence. One of the extension went to the next time frame, which is the extension with the blank. The other three extensions with the letter B, letter E and letter C. Again, we are assuming there are just three letters in our language. So these three extensions remain in the current time frame. So then you can take one of those extensions and extend it from the current time frame. One of one extension with blank would go to the next time frame, but other extensions will remain in the current time frame. So here you can see that you can generate infinitely many hypotheses at t is equal to 1 during the decoding. In the greedy decoding, we made a local optimal choice to kind of get out of this infinite loop, but we will now look at a beam search decoding where we can make some better choices. So as I said, we don't want to stay in time frame t forever, but we do not know when to move to t plus 1 as there are infinitely many candidates that can be explored in the time frame t. So what beam search allows us to do is that make a choice which is better than the local optimal choice but still be in a some computational time bound so that we can finish the decoding. So the goal of beam search is we would like to obtain n candidate hypothesis at a time frame t plus 1 before exiting to decode at t which would be better than all future extensions at t that could go to t plus 1. So you remember that at any time frame index you have some hypotheses which were extended with the blank and had gone to the next time frame. So let's say you are at a time frame t. There are some hypotheses which are already in the time frame t plus 1. What you want to do in beam search is guarantee that there are at least n candidates in the next time frame which are going to be continue to be better than all future extensions which you can do at the current time frame and where n is a hyperparameter. It will become more clear but that is the basic idea. Let's look at a concrete example to understand beam search decoding in more detail. So let's say you have an audio which has four audio frames in it and we want to decode this audio file. So we are starting the decoding. So our text history is beginning of the sentence and since we are starting the decoding, so we are at the audio frame 1. So we pass the audio features of frame 1 to the audio encoder. We get the audio embedding. We pass the text history of the beginning of sentence to the text predictor and we get the text embedding. And we extend the hypothesis from the BOS to four candidates at the time frame 1. So one of the extension would be with the blank which would have gone to the next time frame and then there would be three other extensions which is hypothesis B, hypothesis E and hypothesis C which will continue to stay in the current time frame. So we just have one candidate in the next time frame and our beam size is 3 so value of n is 3 so we cannot yet finish the decoding at this current time frame right so because we want at least 3 candidates in the next time frame given the beam size is 3 to meet the first condition of the beam search. So we take the best hypothesis from the hypothesis candidates at the current time frame. So let's say the best hypothesis is hypothesis B and we extend it. One of the extension B blank would have gone to the next time frame and other three extensions would be in the current time frame. So now I have two hypotheses which are in the next time frame B blank and blank and I have five hypotheses which are in the current time frame and I want at least three hypotheses in the next time frame to meet the beam search criteria. So I can say that my decoding at the current time frame has not yet finished. So I take the best hypothesis among my five candidates in the current time frame and let's say the best hypothesis is hypothesis C and I extend this hypothesis. One of the extension would be C blank which would have gone to the next time frame and then I would have three other extensions C B, C E and C C which will remain in the current time frame. So at this point I have three hypotheses in the next time frame and I have seven hypotheses in the current time frame. 
is having three hypotheses or is having the number of hypotheses in the next time frame equal to the beam size enough for meeting the beam size criteria and of course the answer is no because we have other condition which says that all future extensions of the candidate hypotheses from current time frame should be worse than the hypotheses that are in the next time frame right and we have not checked that condition we have said that having n hypotheses in next time frame is not enough to meet the beam search criteria and let's see why that could be the case so let's say the best hypothesis among the candidates in the previous step of the decoding was BE. And if we had extended that hypothesis, we would get a BE blank, BEB, BEE, and BEC. And BE blank would have gone to the next time frame. And let's assume that the probability of BE blank is greater than C blank. And this is where the beam search condition is violated because if we had continued to extend the hypothesis from current time frame, one of the extension BE blank it had become a better than the hypothesis that we already had in the next time frame. And hence, we could not have finished the beam search by just having three candidates or the number of candidates equal to beam search in the next time frame. And let's look this into more detail. Let's continue the decoding from this point and let's say that that the best hypothesis at this point all extension is BEB so this is my best hypothesis and let's compare it with the nth best hypothesis in the next time so let's say the nth best hypothesis in the next time frame is C blank so we are comparing the probability of the best hypothesis in the current time frame which is BEB with the probability of the nth best hypothesis in the next time frame and if the probability of the nth best hypothesis in the next time frame is better than the best probability in the current time frame then we can exit the beam search and start the the decoding in the next time frame and why that is the case because C blank has a higher probability than BEB and BEB has higher probability than all other candidates at the current time frame. Now if I extend BEB the probability of extended hypothesis is going to be less than the probability of BEB because you are multiplying by value less than one whenever you are extending the hypothesis. So all the future extensions are going to have less probability than BEB and all the current extensions has equal to or less probability than BEB. We can say that if C blank has higher probability than BEB hypothesis, then all the future extensions which could happen from the current time frame are going to have less probability than C blank. Since that is the case, we can exit the beam search as time t and go to the next time frame t plus 1. If this did not meet the condition, then we will take the best hypothesis from the current time frame, extend it and check the condition again in the next step of the decoding. What we have seen so far is that by using the beam search criterion we can exit the decoding at any audio frame t let's say at the test time the audio had capital t audio frames in it the way the beam search algorithm would work is following we would start the decoding at time frame one we would continue to decode at time frame one until the beam search criterion is met and then we would go to time frame two we would do the decoding at time frame two until the beam search criterion is met met for time frame 2 and so on until we finish the decoding at time frame capital T. Once we have done that we would have finished decoding all audio frames of the audio and then we can say that the best hypothesis among the hypotheses that has come out of the time frame capital T would be the transcript of the audio. With this, we conclude the beam search algorithm. Overall algorithm in its pseudo code form is written in this slide. This is from Alex Graves RNNT paper. There is one detail which I had not gotten into is about computation of prefix completion probability. There is a supplemental slide which you can look at to see more about it. But otherwise, this was the way to decode test audio without making local optimal choices. 